All right. All right. There we go. Well, welcome everybody uh, to the February 18th snow day version of the Metro Arts Commission. Hope everybody is staying warm and safe and sound. Um, today, the Metro Arts Commission and Metro Arts staff are joining by conference call. In a moment, we will roll call uh, all members present. This meeting will be recorded and posted within 48 hours to Metro Nashville's YouTube channel. All action items voted on at today's meeting will be reconfirmed at the next in-person meeting of the committee. Public comments previously submitted will be read by a Metro Arts staff member to make in-person comments during the meeting. I'll make an announcement when public comment will be open for each agenda item. At that time, Metro Arts staff and our ITS host will allow any attendees the opportunity to speak. If you're logged into the meeting via WebEx, please use the raise your hand function to indicate you would like to make a public comment. If you're calling in, we will unmute you and ask for a verbal confirmation. Now I encourage all participants on this call to stay muted and use the raise hand WebEx function if they would like to speak. If any commissioners are having technical difficulties with any of these fun functions, please let me know before we proceed. Everybody good? I don't see any hands. Okay, um, with that, I will call the meeting to order. Um, as I call your name, please respond um, if you are present. Um, Commissioner Powell. Sorry, it took me a while to unmute here. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Cheek. Here. Commissioner Alvis. I did not see Commissioner Alvis present. Commissioner Angelico. Present. Thank you. Commissioner Brewer. Here. Commissioner Bird. Here. Commissioner Dow is uh, not present. Commissioner Haynes. Here. Here. Commissioner Busey. Here. Commissioner Ramos. I believe she's one of the call in users. If we can elevate her to a panelist, and there's also several staff members in that bucket as well, but we can deal with that later. Call in user, you are now unmuted. Can you please announce your name? This is Jane. Oh, Commissioner Alvis? Here. Okay. Mr. Ramos? Um, Shardy, would you mind unmuting Mary Elena Ramos in the attendees? She's not showing up in my attendee list. Oh, how strange. Hmm. I see her on the roll call on the participant side. Um, Commissioner Roberts, welcome back. That was cool. Yeah, I was going to say, Paula, are you okay? Yeah, I'm here. That, oh, I didn't okay. That was. There was some here. serious feedback. Sorry. <laughs> okay, Commissioner Ramos has joined twice, which is not allowing me to move the one over, um, but that's why we're getting feedback. So I need to remove her on. Um, I have to remove her on one, and then I'm going to re uh, to mute her on the other. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Commissioner Stringer. Don't see Commissioner Stringer. Commissioner West. Present. Commissioner Walker. Present. And Commissioner Schmidt is here as well. And we have hey, more. This is Mary Elena. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. We hear you loud and clear. All right. And with that, we have a quorum and uh, the meeting is called to order. Um, I will uh, now call for a motion that the meeting agenda constitutes essential business of this body and meeting electronically is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans 
considering the COVID-19 outbreak and is permitted under the governor's executive order number 71. Will someone please propose this motion? This is Will Cheek, so moved. Dexter, second. Thank you. Got a motion and a second. Um, and sorry, and with that, I'll um, call the roll. Uh, Commissioner Powell? Aye. Commissioner Cheek? Aye. Commissioner Alvis? Aye. Commissioner Angelico? Aye. Commissioner Brewer? Aye. Commissioner Bird? Aye. Commissioner Haynes? Aye. Commissioner Busey? Aye. Commissioner Ramos? Aye. Commissioner Roberts? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. And Commissioner Walker? Aye. Schmidt votes aye as well. With that motion is adopted. Um, we'll now um, discuss approval of the board's minutes from April 3rd, 2020 to January 21st, 2021. Um, I know the staff shared this lengthy document with all of us um, covering this COVID period of our meetings. Um, after reviewing all of that documentation, do any of the commissioners have any questions or uh, requested changes? Okay, if there's no changes on that, can I get a motion to approve the uh, batch of minutes from April 3rd, 2020 to January 21st, 2021? I so move. Bird, so move. I second David Walker. Okay, we've got a, a motion by Commissioner Walker and Commissioner um, Bird. Any further comments? Hearing none, I will uh, call the roll. Commissioner Powell? Aye. Commissioner Cheek? Aye. Commissioner Alvis? Aye. Commissioner Angelico? Aye. Commissioner Brewer? Aye. Commissioner Bird? Aye. Commissioner Haynes? Aye. Commissioner Busey? Aye. Commissioner Ramos? Aye. Commissioner Roberts? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Walker? Aye. And Schmidt votes aye as well. With that, the uh, minutes for that period are approved. Um, next, we are uh, moving on to arts and action. Um, and I will turn it over to Emily for presentation for today. Hi, everyone. Happy snow day. Just a few highlights today. A lot of things we're working on are in progress right now. So we'll just keep you updated. Uh, first, we were thrilled to be able to share the news last that Metro Arts received a $50,000 grant from the National Endowment for the Arts to relaunch our Racial Equity and Arts Leadership Program with the Curb Center for Arts Enterprise and Public Policy at Vanderbilt University. This grant will allow us to expand real into a deeper engagement for the learning cohort with a longer curriculum, organizational analysis, and a collaborative project. Applications for 2021 real will open this summer and anyone with questions until then can contact Janine. Next, please. Uh, Marlos, you might know local artist Marlos Yvonne. Uh, they co founded MSPAR, the Magruder Social Practice Artist Residency out of the Magruder Center in North Nashville. So in 2019, Marlos applied for Thrive funding to create Recipes from the Soul, a community cookbook featuring the recipes of people from Nashville's many different cultural backgrounds. Last year, Extended Play Press here in town published Marlos' cookbook. And last week, Miriam Gallery and Bookstore in Brooklyn hosted a virtual book launch, artist talk, and DJ set centered around one of the recipes in his book. Uh, Marlos also went through Learning Lab, and the seeds of this Thrive project sort of grew from something from Learning Lab. So we love it when Thrive and Learning Lab lead to bigger developments in an artist's career. So happy to share that with you. Finally, 
it's application season at Metro Arts for many of our funding programs. So here are some of those updates. Diversity in Arts Leadership, our internship program with Americans for the Arts, offering paid experience in arts administration to undergrad students traditionally underrepresented in arts leadership. Um, AFTA received 460 applications nationwide and 116 of those applicants uh, indicated that Nashville is a city they were interested in. We have five organizations lined up as dual host organizations, uh, the Symphony, Ballet, Cheekwood, Country Music Hall of Fame, and Oz Arts, and student interviews will begin the first week of March. Our grants program has completed the pre-application phase for fiscal year. 51 organizations have completed that step. A record number have requested draft review, so staff will be reviewing and coaching applicants next week, and applicants will move on to the application and review phase next. Uh, this round of Thrive had 19 submissions that are in the review process right now, and we have new members of our Thrive community review panels helping us with those. We'll have that review panel tomorrow, and award selections will be presented at the next commission meeting. Finally, Opportunity Now, Nashville's Youth Employment Initiative. Uh, you'll see our candidates for host organizations up next, and students will be able to uh, begin applying for art space job experiences February 24th. That's all I have for today. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Emily. Appreciate that update. And uh, always good to start with a little rundown of what we have going on in the community. Um, we'll now move on to our action items. Um, public comment will be opened at the end of this presentation. We're on action item number one, the Opportunity Now Host Site Awards. Um, I'll now pass the meeting over to Janine and Nicole Robinson. Great, thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to give a brief overview of Opportunity Now. I know you heard this last month, but I just wanted to um, just review uh, and then I'll pass it off uh, to Nicole, who is the program coordinator for this um, really exciting project. Um, so we have we have an updated budget of 186,200 in available funds, which also matches the request, which is nice. Um, Nicole will be the program coordinator. Um, each site can request up to 26 youth ages 14 to 16 um, and uh, host teams of up to 12 individuals. We provide $950 of funding per youth and they can request a maximum of 24,700 in available um, funds. All right, next slide. Um, so um, as you might remember, this is an arts learning, work readiness and community development um, program. Uh, we partner with Metro Action Commission and they, um, they'll take a lead on recruiting and paying youth um, and also youth ambassadors and peer leaders. And then, um, you know, we will handle the, the uh, checking in with the site host and administering um, uh, and, uh, you know, lots of program administration. This summer, we do have a 37208 focus. Um, and so many of those um, have uh, uh, expressed what uh, commitments they'll make um, that area code. Um, the projects will either be hybrid, virtual, or in-person, of course, depending on where we are um, with the pandemic and uh, CDC guidelines and all of that. Um, and because of the very tight turnaround that we had with getting the this year's program approved and the panel and all of that, um, we just had the panel this past uh, Tuesday. Um, and uh, so unfortunately, it did not go to grants and funding, um, but so we're presenting um, you know, pretty in depth uh, uh, overview of the projects uh, today. All right, uh, next slide. Um, these are some of the upcoming dates. As I said, we just had our review this past week. Um, job um, applications for this program are open uh, from February 24th uh, through April 9th. Then we'll do um, the hiring, training, and orientation, and then launch in, uh, in June, and that'll run until July. So I think that's it for me. Um, we can have the next slide and I'll hand it over to Nicole. Good afternoon. Um, so first up, we have um, Tennessee State University um, who requests $7,600 to serve eight students um, to have their MSPAR Air Youth Program. It's an artist in residence program. They're going to be exposing um, youth to various art forms from photography to set design. They're also going to engage in social practice and community 
community engagement um, as the heartbeat um, of their summer work and youth will develop a personal project, but they're also going to be working collaboratively with each other um, to launch a community art show and a talent show as well. Next slide, please. Next, we have um, Women of Color Collaborative, and they are requesting $15,200 to serve 16 students for their uh, summer intern experience. They're going to be teaching students um, the basics of videography, graphic design, storytelling. They're gonna um, focus on uh, the topic of policy and policy making, and students are gonna generate um, a, a video, uh, a documentary short um, around policy. They're also going to be engaging in service learning that will inform um, their work of art, and they're going to encourage the youth voice and also the reflection piece. Next slide, please. Next up, we have Prado Studio, and they request $19,000 to serve 20 students for their summer project of Envision 37208. Um, they will, uh, youth students will interact daily with artists. They will um, hear perspectives from guest speakers. They're gonna go to different public art uh, displays throughout the city. They're gonna have hands-on training from the Prados. Um, and eventually what will happen are these students will develop uh, their own public art proposals um, of depth and significance that address a specific community need um, that they found in their personal research. Um, the program is going to consist of two works virtual um, or two weeks virtual programming and then four weeks at the Prado studio hands on with different materials and um, experimenting with different mediums. Next slide, please. Now we have um, the King's Daughters Day Home, and they are requesting $22,800 for 24 students so that they can have students um, become art educators. Students are going to be um, provided with opportunities um, to learn about lesson planning as well as introduced to um, a new uh, art form weekly, and then they will collaboratively come up with virtual and video instruction for the youth um, at the um, child care center. They're going to be receiving mentorship and feedback along the way, and they will produce um, a final project um, that they will share at the end of their experience. Next slide, please. Now we have Moves and Grooves. They request $22,800 for 24 youth, and they have an exciting project called Imagine Your Community, and they are going to be exposing youth um, to the best practices in community-centered design and urban development. Um, they will give youth the experience um, of neighborhood mapping, um, a SWOT analysis. They're going to be creating and dreaming up their um, dream community center. And they will also, it'll, they're taking 12 students from Pearl Cone and 12 students from uh, Antioch High, and they will be doing, dreaming up their community centers for their prospective communities. Um, they're going to be presenting their findings at the end of the summer, as well as photo journals that chart the process. Next slide, please. Now we have notes for notes, 24, they are requesting $24,700 to serve 26 students. They are going to be um, giving students opportunities um, on teams of five um, to create EPs, and they're going to blend uh, their youth artists, songwriters, producers, and instrumentalists onto these teams. They're going to um, infuse socio-emotional learning skills as well as 21st century skills. Um, they are going to debut the songs um, on these 
EPs at a uh, virtual listening party at the end of this summer. And now we have Turnip Green Creative Reuse. They are requesting $24,700 to serve 26 students um, in their internship program. They're going to be providing opportunities for development um, of work readiness skills by engaging in their five areas of service, um, which you see listed out before you. And each student is going to have exposure in each of those five areas, and then they're going to um, pick an area that um, they are especially passionate about, as well as um, combine that with their own interests. And they're going to come up with a final project at the end of the summer, and those will be um, they will have a culminating um, art show or culminating event. Um, at the end of the summer. Next slide, please. Next, we have Southern Word, and they're requesting $24,700 to serve 26 students through their project called Creating Cultural Centers Through Words and Music. They're going to be providing opportunities for youth um, to engage um, in songwriting and music production. They're also going to um, develop those hard skills associated with music production and distribution, but also um, pair it with the socio-emotional aptitudes and soft skills that, that um, are needed. They will have a um, listening party as well at the end of the summer, and this is going to take place um, most likely in a hybrid format, um, and they will have studio time uh, with their community partner, Jefferson Street Sound. And uh, finally, we have from the heart, they are requesting $24,700 to um, serve 26 students for their music for life uh, summer internship. They're going to challenge students to pick up an instrument that they've never played before. And then they're going to um, develop a band uh, with groups of students uh, from start to finish. And they will also have a media team that will document this journey. Um, they're hoping to increase youth confidence and self-efficacy as well as teamwork. And um, this will culminate in their uh, participation in the commercial uh, music extravaganza as well as a show at the end of the summer. And uh, that concludes um, our presentations um, with the organization request. So now I'm going to pass it to Chair Schmidt. Great, thank you, Nicole and Janine. Um, we will now open the meeting to public comment. If you're logged into the meeting via WebEx and would like to make a public comment, Please use the raise your hand function now. If you are calling into the meeting, we will unmute you shortly to ask if you would like to make a comment. Um, were any public comments on this motion submitted by email? Uh, no, Chair, they were not. Are there any attendees of this meeting that would like to make a public comment? Um, I don't see any hands. Okay. Uh, that is the end of the public comment for this agenda item. We will no longer be taking comments regarding this subject. Are there any questions from the commissioners? Uh, Commissioner West. Hey, Jim, I have a question about access. So for the virtual platforms, considering this is happening after school is out, I'm not sure if Metro is asking students to return their Metro given laptops. Is there a plan for access for students, for kids that are participating that don't have that at home, that don't have a, a platform at home to work on, whether it's a laptop, computer, and if there's a plan for that? Uh, Janine, oh, can you? Yep, I'll take that. Take that one? Um, yep, I'll take that. Uh, yeah, thank you for that question. So um, we learned a lot of lessons last summer, and um, most of the organizations um, um, you know, and especially the ones that have decided to go virtual ha will have uh, laptops available um, if the students need them and, you know, have gathered different equipment from various sites and um, have made that possible. Um, and if there is a case where 
there is an um, you know there there is a need. Um, Metro Action uh, Commission uh, and Nicole and I will you know will kind of troubleshoot in those individuals. But for the most part, if you've said um, we're going virtual, um, you've stated that you also have the equipment necessary. Thank you, Janine. Yeah, you're welcome. Good question. Um, Commissioner Bird, I saw your hand. Did you have a question or did I answer it? Well, I do, but it, it might be built into the whole thing. Uh, is there any effort made to um, to en enroll or offer access to boys and girls in an even fashion, or is there anything taken into account there? That's a good question, and I know that um, you know uh, Metro Action Commission will work directly with um, you know they're doing a lot of the recruitment themselves, um, and then they'll work directly with the host sites um, and make and uh, and make sure that there is a um, like a, a balance. Um, and of course, you know as stated, there is a three seven two zero eight priority. Um, so that's you know that's the that's um, a major priority that's been stated, um, and then from from there there aren't any um, set requirements. There's no quotas, for example. But I think they do make an effort to uh, you know make sure that there's uh, good access and and representation and diversity uh, amongst uh, the applicants and the 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 students that uh, eventually get chosen for the program. Thank you. And we can give those um, at the end of the program. We can give that breakdown. To see how it all worked out. Thank you. Welcome. Great. Thank you, Jane. Commissioner Roberts. Thank you, Chair Schmidt. I do have two quick questions. Um, do these projects exhaust all the Opportunity Now funds? Yes, they exhaust all the Opportunity Now funds uh, from Metro Action Commission. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, that they've given us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Every single dollar. That's what I wanted to know. Thank you. And then second, um, I think you just kind of answered this, but will we receive a report out or an evaluation at the end of the summer or beginning? Absolutely. Of the okay. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Great. Do, do any other commissioners have any uh, questions? Mr. West, you still have your hand up. I assume that's just a uh, leftover, right? Okay. Chair Schmidt, um, I got yes. a comment via text from one of our attendees. Um, okay. It's our council member uh, Van Reed said the laptops that Metro students have were paid for through federal dollars and they will not be asked to be returned this summer, um, but they're already being tracked by ITS. So she wanted to share that. Great. Thank you. Um, if, if there's no further questions from any of the commissioners, um, we will, I'll, I'm open for a motion to approve. So moved, I'll make, oh, go ahead. Uh, uh, so moved. I'll second. Commissioner Byrd and Commissioner Roberts um, with a motion and a second. Any further comments? Hearing none, I'll call the roll. Commissioner Powell. I vote aye. Commissioner Cheek. Aye. Commissioner Alvis. Aye. Commissioner Angelico. Aye. Commissioner Brewer. Aye. Commissioner Bird. Aye. Commissioner Haynes. Aye. Commissioner Busey. Aye. Commissioner Ramos. Aye. Commissioner Roberts. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Walker. Aye. And Commissioner Schmidt votes aye as well. With that, we approve the site selections um, for opportunity now. Um, moving on next, the we have the uh, public art review and updates. Um, obviously, this week's been a challenge and uh, with snow, we have, weren't able to have those meetings. So we're gonna push that off until the next meeting. Um, and, and Next, I'm going to turn it over to Commissioner Roberts to give us an update on the Committee for Anti-Racism and Equity and the results of their planning retreat. Commissioner Roberts. Thank you, Chair Schmidt. Yes, so since we last had our commission meeting, the committee had a retreat at the end of January. 
and we had some really good things come out of it. One of which um, is a discussion around equity lens and looking at things from a, um, looking at all programs and aspects of the commission, um, programming, sorry, let me work on it, programming work and all the efforts of the agency on the larger national community. And so Trey, do you have the question or is that, was that in? Thank you. So these are from the Maryland Association of Boards of Education. And there are five questions. And what the committee is doing is we are kind of taking deep dives on all of these questions. So it's really about, you know, understanding potential harm um, and just asking whether or not we're truly equitable in terms of our outcomes. And so we are working on this now. We met last night, um, our working groups, we're a small committee, a committee of 10, but the working groups put in a lot of time and energy um, on various things. So this is one of the ones that we're looking at now. And we'll probably be bringing this to the commission for a, um, as a recommendation once we um, truly work through it. We're working with uh, Janine, Trey, Grace, and Caroline, all of which They've been fantastic through this process, but we're working with them to kind of see whether or not we should um, to make sure it makes sense if that if for the commission. And when we, when I say that, I'm kind of tripping over my words. We want to make sure that um, we assess the revised questions to look at either Thrive grants um, and to make sure that the questions are properly written. And so we're going to go through a um, trial run. And once we do that and we make sure that we've um, sorted everything out, then we'll probably have our own equity lens questions that we will then bring forth to the commission for a vote. So that's one of the big things that we're working on. Um, the second thing is that we're looking at establishing a comprehensive equity training for onboarding new commissioners. Most likely next month, we'll bring forth a recommendation for equity training um, and what that looks like and then um, I mentioned the staff, they've been fantastic. I couldn't do this without them. And then once we get through the equity lens piece, as well as the um, onboarding for new commissioners, then we will be working on um, figuring out how to do an organizational assessment that looks at equity, and then also a communication plan um, that kind of spells out how do we get deeper into communities that we don't um, reach. And so we're working through all of that. And like I said, we're um, it's a good group. It took us a while to meld and to kind of really start to form, but we're seeing actionable items. And so I also want to thank Will for co-chairing this with me because it's been um, a process to say the least. And that's my report. If there are any questions, I'll take them. Uh, Commissioner Angelica. Yeah. Hey, I'm just wondering, uh, you are all considering opening that onboarding to current members as well. Yes, uh, there have been, um, and when we say no, you're considered in the new space. So yes, you would be there. Um, and then any other commissioner who wants to do it, but we want to make sure that it is a standard process for new commissioners coming in. Awesome. So we know that there are three new commissioners, um, you, Dexter, and David. Um, so we want to make sure that um, we have something in place. We're just kind of working through what makes sense. How do we do it? How do we make sure that it's um, streamlined? Cool. Thank you very much. Hey, Paula, can I ask a quick question? This is, uh, so would this training be additional to the encouraging? Obviously, right now we encourage members to take the, the art training that's provided um, or has been provided in the past through the partnership we have is this this so this is additional to that or would this kind of replace is it the same it's replacing okay. um, so the crossroads training is there and it's available um, I know will and I have both gone through training at our own expense but this would be um, a different program that would, um, but we haven't, we just got the information from Crossroads on what this alternate training would be. It's not through Crossroads, it's through another agency. So once the committee reviews it, then we'll bring it to the commission. And the other question I had was, was there some discussion at the retreat and the planning 
obviously a lot of this is kind of self-focused on the agency and our our policies and procedures. Is there a look to the future in trying to increase um, the involvement out in the broader community of our grantees and others? Yes, absolutely. Um, and this is even this equity lens piece that we're spending so much time on. It's that maybe we can even theoretically, if we decide to do this, we could incorporate the same questions for grantees and for other individuals who are applying for Metro funds. Great. So this is just kind of the beginning step of just kind of figuring it out. Awesome. Anyone else have any other questions for Paula? Great. Well, thank you very much, Paula and Will, for the charge on this and to the staff for taking so much. I know it's a, an arduous process, um, but very, very happy y'all are taking this on and taking the extra time to do it. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Caroline for the executive director's report. Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here today and your snow day or snow week. Um, I thought I would just overview real quick. I mean, I know we're coming up on a year of virtual meetings, so we always want to make sure we're updating you because many, you know, we have new commissioners as well. Many of the actions and, and things we're working on don't always rise to the level of commission. So I just kind of wanted to review that we are providing a monthly board brief in your packet that Grace sends, and that's a one pager. We try to make it one page just of the high highlights, high level highlights of you know outcomes from the previous month upcoming priorities and anything that we feel is noteworthy to share with you. So I do encourage you to make sure you're looking at that. Um, and then, you know, the presentation that Emily does at the beginning of each meeting is another way that we're trying to highlight things that are happening. And of course, our arts alert um, e-newsletter that goes out twice a month, we spend quite a lot of time on curating that and making sure it's, um, you know, including all of our programs and things that are going on. And then I thought, you know, we usually do at the end of a meeting, like, a you know, project updates and things like that, but really it's more of a executive director's report. So I changed the name of it for that reason, just to think about things that you might not have heard about in any of those other um, venues. So I just wanted to, um, you know, review that that and, and also just let us know. We'd love to hear feedback if you're like, hey, I really don't know what's going on with X or this or that, or I feel disconnected. Um, please do let us know because we are trying to, in this virtual world, share as much as possible. But I know that there's a lot that goes on between meetings and between um, you know, the virtual settings, we just, we can't share as much as we normally would. Uh, I did want to update you. We made our budget submission this week to Metro Finance. So we did ask for restoration of our grants budget, which was reduced last year in the process um, by $200,000. So we're hopeful that we can at least get back to where we were, you know, FY20 levels, which would get us to the 2.5 million in our grants budget. We also asked for an increase of a half a million, which would be, you know, get us up to 3 million. And that might be, um, you know, I don't know, uh, optimistic, but we did want to sort of share the case, you know, that this is needed. All of our arts organizations are having uh, a really hard year. Many of the performing arts we know will not go back until 2022. I mean, I think some are trying to come back in the fall of 2021, depending on, you know, vaccination schedules and things like that. But I feel like most um, in the sector are looking at, you know, 2022 being the year of, you know, comeback and recovery. And that's a really long time to exist without um, their regular sources of revenue. So we are very focused on that. Um, we did also ask for reinstatement of an open position that we've had under the hiring freeze. So we had to ask for that, even though it's already budgeted. And then we asked for an additional FTE to support programs because we are doing so much in new programs and um, the community requests for funding and, and just all of the very things we're, various things we're doing have increased quite a bit. So I think, um, you know, like I said, we don't know what's going to happen with the Metro budget, but we do want to make the case of what, what the actual need is. And we do have a huge increased demand for our programs and funding dollars. So those were the main highlights of our budget request. And I'll certainly let you know how that goes. We have um, been told there will be a meeting in March of, um, you know, mayor's office staff and finance in you know the normal process that we go through and then of course um, assuming in late may we'll do our council hearing that we normally do so that is where we are on budget in the interim i decided we really need some help so we put out a call for a part-time you know temporary contract person that we could just get in to help um, especially on janine's team 
uh, because we do have that vacancy and there's just an enormous amount of work. And I'll say again, the staff works harder than any one I know they have just kept going and kept plugging and they're doing so much. And as you can see, there's just so many applications, you know, coming at us right now. So um, we do need some interim help and, and we've got the application is closed and we'll be um, looking at those applicants in the um, next few weeks. Um, but that is just a temporary contract position sort of hourly um, to get to get us through. And then we have um, last week we had a presentation by data clinic, which is through the company Two Sigma out of New York who um, do pro bono data projects for clients. And we are very excited to see what they've come up with. They're basically modeling our data based on 20 years of funding data that they have in our grants program and then more recent data with Thrive and other things that we do, public art data, and overlaying that over different um, other data sets within the open data portal. So it's really interesting to see what they've come up with. They're looking at sort of um, geographic um, saturation of public art, like we're looking at gaps, like where do we have spaces in our city that have a high population, but but very little public art. And so thinking about using this as a, as a planning tool, they're also looking at schools data. So we have um, overlaid data of funding and grantees who you know, are working in various schools. And then you're looking at like, okay, of the 150 plus metro schools and or private or other schools, where do we not have arts organizations? And I think that's a question we haven't really asked ourselves. We ask, you know, grantees where they're working, um, they report on that, but we haven't really said like, hey, here's an area that we need more, you know, um, investment from arts and culture. So I'm really excited about the outcomes of that, and we'll certainly share that with you when it's a little more um, polished. And those will be tools we can use going forward, which is really exciting. So that is all happening. And I, we were going to do sort of a big um, public art update, like Jim mentioned, but uh, just technical challenges and lack of childcare and illnesses and all the things that happened this week, we decided to push that off. But we did want to kind of recap all the things that are going on in public art that are not, um, you know, you're not maybe seeing vis visibly, visibly in the meetings each month, but they are happening. So a lot's going on with our um, fairgrounds project, which is a large scale $650,000 budget project. And we're in, I think, almost done with contract negotiations with that artist so she can begin community engagement. Um, Cossie Gardner Park is underway. Uh, Matthew Mazzotta's project in Madison is moving forward in his design development. Um, we also had a lot of work that Ann Leslie is doing or with our conservator around um, post bombing, looking at the artworks in the courthouse and uh, in the you know surrounding areas downtown, just to make sure there wasn't damage or um, just thinking about like structural review of our large scale pieces and things like that that we do periodically anyway, but um, certainly wanted to pay special attention um, to that. Um, Area. So that's all I have for now, but feel free to reach out with any other questions or anything we haven't covered today. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Caroline. Does anyone have any questions for Caroline? I don't see any. Well, thank you again to the staff. I know um, virtual world is not easy um snow days make it even harder but we thank you everybody for for doing their best and um getting through this together so um if nobody else has anything further for the good of the order then uh this completes the business of this meeting our next meeting will be tuesday march 18th at noon staff will keep everybody updated about the extension of the virtual meeting order um, which currently expires on the 27th of this month. Um, since that meeting date also falls during the MNPS spring break, um, we'll probably be checking in about the availability of, every, of commissioners and discuss if we ought to move it to the following week. So I think we will probably send around an email um, to everybody and, and try to see, make sure we can get quorum and all that for that meeting. If not, we may adjust the date. So, and if there's nothing else, then um, y'all have a great rest of the day and we stand adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. Thank bye. you, everyone.